What's happening, everybody? It's Sean with Reactions to the Classics, and today we got a top 10 songs reaction of songs about families. This brought to us by our friend, longtime patron, supporter of the channel, Scott. Thank you, Scott. Always appreciate you. Appreciate all the patrons that make this thing go. If you'd like to help us out in any way, it's much appreciated. Check out the Patreon link below or the patron link on the end screen. The patrons keep it possible for us to upload videos every single day. All right, Scott's list. So let's get into Scott's thoughts about it. He always gives these great write-ups. He says, 10 songs to and about our families. Tis the season of honoring and celebrating our moms and dads and of being honored ourselves as moms and dads. So right now it's late May when I'm filming this. So if Mother's Day happened, Father's Day is coming up. For many people, sadly not all of us, it's a time of celebration and happy memories and restaurants and barbecues and gifts of socks and bad ties and stupid but funny greeting cards. Scott says, now that he's older, robust 63, I've had some time to consider my own parents and what it has meant to me that I'm a father myself. Because I'm a Christian, my view of parenthood flows through the lens of what it means to follow Jesus and how my love for God translates to my own love for my daughter, their only child, a daughter who now has two little girls of her own. At 35, my daughter and her husband are wondering about those same things. What does it mean to bring up children to focus on their love for God within the harsh context of a broken and corrupt world? How can they protect their little girls from the evils that await them around every corner? Or can they protect them at all? I wondered the same thing when I was a young father. And now that I've lived through it, I can look back and say with difficult honesty that I could have indeed protect her, protected her from some of the pain, but I failed to do so as diligently as I should have. Do all parents feel this way? I don't know about all parents, but I think... Most of us go through those things. I I have two kids. I have Trey, who does his channel with me. So if you watch the channel all the time, you know this. He's 26. And Mackenzie, who's 15. And yeah, man, I, I totally get that. Scott says, my life of following Jesus has included the vital decision, a decision I made 10,000 times along the way to lay at his feet, the life of my child, that he would stay close to her when I cannot. I 100% uh, relate with that. Most of the songs on this list are written to the kids of these musicians. One song is about a grandmother and another is about a grieving mom. These are the artists I've come to trust through the years, not merely because they are excellent musically, but because their songwriting has been for me a consistent source of wisdom, companionship, and welcome assurance that I am not alone on this road. These artists' names have appeared regularly on my past list with one new name thrown in. He'll be the first guy on our list, too. These songs about family rightly recognize the joy of being a dad and mom, but they also face head-on realities of painful parenting. I've arranged the songs a bit differently than my past list. So we'll go from artist to artist rather than randomly or by subject matter. I chose this course because each artist has a unique voice when it comes to his family. I think there's more benefit and enjoyment for us as we hear from each one by one. And as always with my list, there is no best or worst. The purpose here is to reflect on our role as parents or as people who have parents. Hopefully we'll detect the hand of God in the middle of these common and remarkable reflections. Great write-up as always. I shared with you. I'm, I'm a father too. I'm also a Christian like Scott. So I look at things through that lens as well. And that's helped me out greatly with some difficult things that my, my kids and especially Trey has had to go through. So we're going to kick this off with the song Daughter by Loudon Wainwright III from the Strange Weirdos album in 2007. Now, a reminder, the music won't be in here, but it will be at a Vimeo link below. So follow along with us. I know Loudon Wainwright only because Trey and I did a song battle of his a couple months ago. I'd never heard of him before then. Scott says, I confess I don't know any other songs by this artist. The first time I heard this track was on the credits rolled on the movie Knocked Up with Seth Rogen. The dubious title, I've seen that movie as well, the dubious title notwithstanding, the song immediately became a track I had to have in regular circulation. This song went on to become the song my daughter and I chose years later for the father-daughter dance at her wedding. Wow. Scott says, and by dance, I mean she danced and I shuffled around awkwardly. I feel you there, man. This is a song that still chokes me up a bit when I listen to it. Remember my own little daughter in the water. And now that she has two little girls of her own, my daughter, the mom, now gets why it's a special song for me. I'll do my best to make it through these songs, guys. I just realized that, you know, it just kind of hit me like a ton of bricks a couple weeks ago. Mackenzie, my daughter, is uh, three years away from graduating from high school. And I, I don't know how that happened, man. So these might hit me a little different, man. But thanks again, Scott. Well, let's do this. Daughter, Loudon Wainwright the third. You know, the, the musicianship on this was tremendous. You had a pedal steel on it from Greg Wise. He's also on acoustic with Loudon and the percussion was great, kind of interesting on there. The drums even had an accordion from Van Dyke Park. So the instrumentation was very diverse, kind of went to the, the feeling of the song. You know, it's my daughter in the water, but everything she sees, she says she wants. Everything she wants, I see she gets. So dad is the provider, right? That's my daughter in the water. Everything she owns, I bought her. Everything she owns, that's my daughter in the water. Everything she knows, I taught her. Everything she knows. So very involved dad. Everything I say, she takes to heart. Now that's that's a little two-line couplet in there that all dads should take to heart and moms, right? 
everything I say, she takes heart. Careful with those words, man. Everything she takes, she takes apart. So it's a younger daughter and goes to the chorus again. And verse three, every time she blinks, she strikes somebody blind. Every Everything she thinks blows her tiny mind, so she's young. But she's beautiful, and you know that's what he's just kind of getting in there. So a fantastic song. I can see why this, this catches you in the feels, Scott, if you used it as a father-daughter song at the dance, and then you hear it again, man, because I'll tell you what. You know, I said, I got a son and a daughter. That connection with the daughter and that protection over her and just what you feel for her is, I mean, I love Trey to death. There's not a difference in how much I love. It's just, it's just a difference, man, with the daughter, that protection there. So great first song to kick this list off. Now we'll go to Little Man by Pierce Pettis. He's going to have three songs in a row uh, on this list. Tinseltown, 1991 is the album it's off of. Scott says, I wonder these days that the fingerprints of God in our world, especially within the actions and attitudes of people, are gradually growing fainter as time goes on. And even though we've seen yet another unimaginable school shooting, there are still glimpses of God out there joy with the human, within the human race. Joy that is experienced by all people, from devout Christians to hostile atheists. One of those pockets of joy is found in parents of new babies. It's a universal reality that when a couple discovers that their baby is on the way, great joy ensues and the news gets spread far and wide. With this track, Pettis expresses that joy as he considers the smallness of his new son. Now, six of these songs aren't anywhere, so Scott sent them to me. So you're not going to see the Spotify bar, but we got Little Man Pierce Pettis. Little Man Pierce Pettis for his son, like he's going to go on and have a daughter and a grandmother song as we go through the next two songs. But, you know, his son is, uh, yeah, an infant, a, a newborn. Little Man, he smiles at me, he ain't got no hair, he ain't got no teeth, but he is beautiful indeed. He is my little man. So, we all know this, right? Newborns are not exactly the cutest creatures in the world, usually. But as a parent, when you look at them, you can't see anything but the beauty. That's one of the great things. Little man, he cries at night. He don't know no wrong. He don't know no right. And the dark is full of serpent bites. Oh, watch out, little man. Watch out. I can't always catch you when you fall. As you grow, you'll see I'm not that tall. Just the one who loves you most of all, little man. You're always going to be my little man. And that one kind of resonated with me with Trey. You know, he's 26, but... Um, He's gone through a lot of stuff health-wise that hit him when he was 14, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, and then uh, when he was 17, fibromyalgia, and I've watched his uh, happen to him and not been able to do anything, so that kind of resonates. I, always, I can't always catch you when you fall. When your kids are young, usually, not always, you can kind of fix everything, make everything all right, but then there's things that come across in life where you just have to trust God that he knows better than you do. Um, which is what Scott was talking about at the beginning. So that really resonated with me. So I thought that was a really good offering. Hit, hit a little personal with me there. Now we'll go back over to Spotify this time for Pierce's next offering. Great Big World, off the Great Big World album in 1998. Scott says, when my daughter was five or six, I started reading stories to her at bedtime. The books I read to her were the Chronicles of Narnia, stories she loved immediately and insisted I keep reading to her over and over and over again. In fact, we read them together almost every night, well into her high school years. She learned much about Jesus from a very big lion named Aslan and how he worked in the lives of four Pavenzi kids. With this track, Pettis sings to his child at bedtime and alludes to Aslan as, quote, a lion who gets you into trouble, but brings you home safe in the end. Great big world. That one actually hits you too, as well as a, as a father, man. I mean, I know that's the idea of it, but I'm more tired than you as I reach down to tuck you into bed. I've got to find the bear and the tiger that sleep beside your head. This love that I feel is ferocious as a lion, so brave and so gentle that I almost feel like crying. It's a great big world. It's a great big moon. It's a great big sky. It's a great big love for you. And then I tell you the story of a lion who's your best friend. He gets you into trouble, but he brings you home safe in the end of what Scott alluded to. Someday all these stories may come to life as true when a child of your own can wake that lion in you because I truly believe that you can't know like just that deepest, deepest love, uh, at least for me. I, should, I shouldn't generalize that to everyone until you have a child, right? It's the same reason why if you're a Christian, you know, God is called Father. Like that love you have for your child, man, you can't, you can't quantify it. You can't describe it. You just know, right? And that's what he's talking about there. And someday he's telling her, you'll know if you have children of your own, what this is like, man. So yeah, just, just an awesome song there. Now we'll go to Pierce's third and final song in here. We got Grandmother Song off that Tinseltown album in 1991. Again, same one Little Man is on. Scott says, I've felt for some time now that one of the unfortunate realities of being human is that we rarely get to know our parents and we almost certainly don't really know our grandparents. Sure, we know that when they were born and some of the details of their lives, but really only know them generally as our parents or as our grandma and grandpa. I can speak for myself when I say that as a teenager, I was startled to learn that my parents actually had lives before they started having us kids. Weirdly, our parents and their parents were actual people with talents and dreams and aspirations and disappointments and regrets. In short, their lives didn't begin when we showed up. 
With this track, Pettis, with a note of sadness, sings of his grandmother and her talent for poetry. I don't know this to be true, but I'm guessing Pierce wished he knew her better, especially as he was growing into his own undeniable talent for poetry and songwriting. Really nice song. Great acoustic guitar work. Pierce is such a good uh, guitar player, which a lot of the people on this list are. That's one of the commonalities that they have here. But grandmother song. So he's, yeah, he's writing about the poetry that his grandmother was really good at. But it, he weaves that in and out of her life. If no one really knew it, right? As a little girl, she was really good at it. But if she didn't fit in, you know, in her, in her environment. So she was kind of a an outcast in Mississippi growing up. And then she went to teacher's college, but she met this guy and he was a railroad worker. But he forgot to come home one day and she was left with three kids to raise. So he he bailed on her, man, left her alone. And what was she going to do? She had to use that teaching degree. And all throughout, no one knew that she had this poetry uh, gift, right? And then now she's at the end of her life and, and kind of fading away. And he meant to go see her, but he never had time. And even goes into the nurses, talks about the nurses station when she's in the hospital. They work the crossword puzzle by the switchboard light and the nurses don't know grandma was a poet, a poet in her own time. So a really good song. Really kind of, I think it has a, a few layers to it. Yes, I think he probably wished he knew his grandmother more. And, you know, people don't let us see some of the best sides of them sometimes or their interests. But I get that. Like, I don't know a ton about my own parents, right? I mean, they're both still alive, but we don't really talk much nowadays. And uh, I know some of the stuff, but not much. And I think I think my kids, Mackenzie and, and Trey, know a lot more about Gene and I. We've been very open about our lives, but I totally get that, man. And, and a different generation didn't really share anything about themselves either. So great song for Pierce, from Pierce that really makes you stop and think. Now we're going to go to Bob Bennett for two songs. We got Angels Around Your Bed from Songs from the Bright Avenue in 1991. Both of our songs are from that album. Scott says, some of us have had time to spend away from our kids for reasons that are as varied as we are. Harry Chapin's song, Cats in the Cradle, became a cautionary tale for dads in the 70s and 80s, warning us of the danger of missing out on our kids growing up because we were so focused on our careers. I'm going to tell you, I spent 10 years in men's ministry, and that was the number one thing I would see. Uh, not, not providing for your family. I'm talking about that, but I'm talking about being married to your work uh, when you didn't need to be and losing your, your kids and your spouse and those sorts of things through it. So something we still need to be very aware of. Yet even with the most attentive and conscientious parents, a uh, parent finds that time away is sometimes unavoidable. This is true. With this track, Bob Bennett Waymans his time away from his kids as he spends time on the road as a musician. Really no way to avoid that, right? That's where they make the majority of their money. So he offers an encouragement with them as he directly addresses his kids. As a little girl, my daughter took this song to heart and now with her own little girls, she prays for them every night that as they sleep, Jesus would surround their beds with his angels. I've done that once or twice or 500 times with my own daughter. Angels around your bed, pretty self-explanatory from Scott's write-up, but Bob's writing to his daughter tonight, I'm so far away from you, how I wish I could suddenly be there to tell you I love you like a hundred times before. Uh, and a split second prayer escapes into the air and I pray as you lay your body down. There'll be angels around your bed, little darling, angels around your bed. You'll be safe from harm at the dying of the day with angels around your bed. So he just kind of expands on that motif. Uh, a credible song to write to your daughter and actually be able to play for her, I am sure. Now we got one more from Bob Bennett, like I said, from the same album. No such thing as divorce. Scott says, I grew up having never known my parents as a married couple. It's a situation all too common in the world, even among the Christian community. The reasons for such breakups are not the point here, of course, except to say that the most vulnerable victims of divorce are the children. C.S. Lewis has written that divorce is very much like the tearing apart of a body, like losing a limb. I think this is all the more true in the lives of Christians who arrive at such a place. The second guessing, the inevitable guilt, and the aftermath of children and their devastated lives are all natural results that can take years, even decades, to resolve, if ever. Bob Bennett experiences very thing, and as a Christian songwriter, was compelled to write this heart-wrenching musical letter to his kids. I've heard him perform this song in concert for a Sunday morning church service, and there weren't very many dry eyes in the congregation. Wow. No such thing as divorce. I read that this whole album was kind of his outcry after, you know, the disillusion of his marriage. So I didn't live through divorce, but I lived through a family life that was not good. So I don't, I don't quite relate to this like those of you who went through this, but I, uh, I think the overall theme of this is so good, and I've said this many times, that you know, there's no relationships in your earthly life that are guaranteed except for those with your kids, right? You're always going to be their parent, no matter what. Any other relationship, you might think that's your best friend forever or your spouse forever, but those things can end, man, unfortunately. But the kid is always your kid, and the Bible talks about that. The Bible in nowhere says, once your kid hits 18, get him out the door, right? 
That's a modern thing. That's not what the Bible said. You're always a parent, right? Those those obligations never go away. You're not freed of those. And I just think this is just, yeah, it's just so good. And I mean, so many heartbreaking lines in here. He's talking about the divorce. And the, the, the course, there's no such thing as divorce between the father and his son, between a daddy and his daughter. There's no such thing as divorce. No matter what has happened, no matter what will be, there's no such thing as divorce between you and me. And basically just saying the mistakes that he made in his marriage with their mom is going to make him a better dad. He's not going to make those same mistakes again. So, I mean, what a great song. Now we're to our final artist. We have Light Princess from Terry Scott Taylor from the album Knowledge and Innocence in 1986. Scott says the final four tracks come from Terry Scott Taylor, who by now you see that I hold in high esteem. We got a lot of stuff up. He right? appears in all the ways and all that good stuff. I actually could have filled this whole list with Terry Taylor penned songs to and about various members of his family. The album on which this track appears was written as a reflection on the passing of his grandfather and the miscarriage of his wife, of his and his wife's first daughter. Man, this track addresses that loss, and even then, as a young man, Taylor expressed in his writing a stark awareness of the brevity of this life and the better country awaiting us. With this track, he attempts to put into perspective the devastating loss of his daughter as he considers an eternity where she will find herself immediately present with their Lord Jesus. Scott also says, one side note, my wife and I experienced a miscarriage as has my daughter and millions of other mothers and fathers. I'm so sorry, man. I have long felt that the pro-life versus pro-choice debate boils down to this one truth. For those who want their babies and anticipate being parents, life starts at conception. And for those who are inconvenienced by an unplanned and unwanted pregnancy, it's not a baby at all. It seems to be a matter of anticipation versus inconvenience. You know, I never thought of it that way. That is probably the best way I have ever heard it put. There is, there is some wisdom there. Light Princess. Well, I think, you know, we had one minute of a coda there in the outro. I mean, both the music and then, wow, man, like the bell for whom the bell tolls was so powerful. This song is so powerful. I love the production on it. Definitely has a different sound than a lot of the other stuff that we've heard. Hand to teary eyes, brush shadows, and then that little call and response, I see it now. Much to my surprise, a light grows. I see it now. No, I could not hold this child in my arms, so I let her go, and she floated to heaven. She's up in heaven. Oh, man. A loss again. God knows her name because she's up in heaven. A gift taken away from my world. I see it now. No, she could not stay in this world. I have few answers. I quit asking why. Since she's lighter than air and she's floating to heaven, she's up in heaven. No, I could not hold this child in my arms, so I let her go, and she's floated up to heaven. The last chorus, I think, is just, it kind of sums everything up in the Christian world. The father gives, the father takes her up on to heaven. I think if you're going to accept the Bible as the inerrant word of God, you have to accept everything in it. You have to accept the things in life. You don't have to like them. I don't like what I see Trey go through at all. It, it pains me as a father, and I'm sure it always will. But I accept it because I've got to accept all the good things with the quote bad because I know that God has a totally different view of things than I do, right? He sees what I cannot. He has reasons for everything, and everything is done for the good of us and the good of him. So um, I just have to accept that, and I think that's where Terry Scott Taylor is coming from on this song. So powerful. Now you actually see it on the Spotify bar. I'm setting you free, in parentheses, but I'm not letting you go from Lost Dogs. Though this, Scott says, though this song appears on a Lost Dogs album, this track is all Taylor. Undoubtedly, one of the more painful moments for any parent is watching our kids venture out into the world away from our watchful and protective eyes. Whether they're heading off to college across the city or to another state where a new job awaits, sending them into the cruel world is a painful thing to endure, but it inevitably comes with the role of parent. With this track, Terry Scott Taylor addresses his daughter as she's about to begin her own adventure and he offers her some fatherly advice. I'm setting you free. Let me tell you what, if Mackenzie was graduating right now, I'd have been sitting here in tears, man. This song makes me sad of just thinking of that moment, but I'm setting you free, but I'm not letting you go. I'm watching you fly away, but keeping you close. I can't help but cry a little, heaven knows. I'm setting you free, I'm not letting you go. Mom says, I spoil you. Please come home real often, often and soon. Would you think of us as foolish if we do some pretending by leaving your light on here in your room? Uh, then just tell her to dry slow. Call me when you get there. You know, if you need anything, we'll be there. In the meantime, we're praying that your future is bright. Then that last chorus, man, where's that princess in a party dress? Now she's a young lady with dreams. Fly away, butterfly on the wind taking wings. First time I held you, child, you forever changed my soul. And I'm holding you now because I want you to know. Wow. Yeah, that one gets to me. Like Mackenzie and I, I took her to a father-daughter dance uh, every year from the time she was four until she was 12. I got... Got the pictures right over there on the wall, man. I can just see it year by year, the growing up of my uh, of my little girl. So, man, this one hits me. One of my best friends in the world told me one time, <laughs> this was not reassuring. He had two daughters. 
He said, however bad you think it's going to be when they leave the house, he said, don't worry. He said, it's a hundred times worse. I was like, awesome, man. Thank you. But I always appreciate his honesty. Shout out. Shout out to Mike on that one. Now to our ninth song, Mama's in the Desert, Daddy's in the Sky. This is Terry Scott Taylor from Little Big in 2002. Scott said, I know I included this track on a previous list, but for the purposes of this family focus list, I had to revisit it. Maybe this is a consummate Mother's Day song for a man whose mom was grieving the passing of his dad. Terry's love and respect for his mom comes through clearly as he sings of wishing he could somehow relieve her pain. Even still, he offers her the ultimate hope while avoiding sappy platitudes by assuring his mom that the day is surely coming when the desert she now lives in will transition to an eternity reunited with her husband and her heavenly father. Terry Scott Taylor, Mom is in the Desert, Daddy's in the Sky. Just talks about his mom being in pain. Um, he called her but left a message on her machine like we did back in the day. It's another one she'll save. I bet she's gone to talk to daddy and lay some flowers on the grave. And then she says she knows dad isn't there, but it helps her to get by. My mom is in the desert. My daddy's in the sky. So the desert, right? Mama's struggling, right? We're in a desert. It's a desolate place, right? The Bible talks about this as well. So she's just in the desert, maybe on this earth and maybe spiritually a little bit. I don't know. And then talking about, uh, you know, a guy at church has been really good to her and there were hearts torn into. Someday she seems past comforting. Most nights don't bring relief. Wish I could carry all she bears and hide her from her grief. So like a good son, he wishes he could carry those. And, and then the course too has a nice little play on words. And, and though her tears are like rain go falling, it's still arid there and dry. Mama's in the desert. Daddy's in the sky. And our pop is up there waiting. I've seen him in a dream. As for all us desert nomads, there is a living spring. So all the Christians living on earth, there's a better place, right? So mama, don't be crying. We'll all get there by and by. Soon we'll leave our dry bone deserts, meet our father, our father in the sky. So, I mean, a great song, really good production. For our last track, we're going to go back over to Spotify and back to Terry Scott Taylor, but when he's with the Lost Dogs, the Lord protect my child from scenic routes or roots, whatever you prefer, in 1992. Scott says his final track is a cover of a Bob Dylan song that Dylan released on his Springtime in New York, the Bootleg Series, Volume 18. It's Terry Scott Taylor and Michael Rowe of the Lost Dogs share the lead vocals and do it justice. Lyrically, Dylan, by way of the dogs, expresses in a prayer the sentiment I expressed in my intro to this list. One of the great frustrations, even fears, of the conscientious parent is that we simply cannot protect our children from every evil that waits them in their lives. Nor can we be at their sides every minute of every day, warding off potential dangers, if only, right? Dylan's lyrics express perfectly the Christian's position that our Heavenly Father can be there every minute of every day, watching out for our little ones. So, love me some Dylan. We have more Dylan up on the channel than anybody else except for the Beatles. And really love me some Terry Scott Taylor. So, a nice combination here. Let's finish this great list off. Lord, protect my child. What an awesome way to end this list. You had Greg Kellogg on the Dobro there because this had a, a decidedly country arrangement. It was really uh, surprising to me when it started. They alternate verses, basically. And uh, Terry Scott Taylor, sound, he was channeling his inner Dylan. I mean, Michael Rowe was as well, but Terry Scott Taylor was, sounded like Bob Dylan on that first verse. So, And, and this is just talking about you know this, this child as he grows up for his age. He's wise, got his mother's eyes. There's gladness in his heart. He's young and he's wild. My only prayer is I can't be there. If I can't be there, work protect my child. And now his youth unfolds. He is century old, so he's getting older, right? See him play makes me smile no matter what happens to me, no matter what my destiny, Lord, protect my child. So what most of, us, most of us feel as parents, right? You hope everyone does, but I know it's only most of us that, you know, do whatever you want to me, but will my child be okay? Terry Scott Taylor, when the world is asleep, you can look at him and the third verse comes in and weep. A few things you find that are worthwhile, Though I don't ask for much, no material things to touch, Lord, protect my child. So once again, I don't want anything to protect my child. And then he's young and on fire, full of hope and desire. In a world that's been raped, raped and defiled. That was just incredibly strong. If I follow along the way and I can't see another day, Lord, protect my child. And at the very end, great final verse, right? And great final verse to just finish off this top 10 list. There'll be a time I hear tell when all will be well, knowing God and man have been reconciled. But until men lose their chains and the righteousness reigns, Lord, protect my child. So a great song to finish off. Now, it's always a difficult one. I pick my favorite tracks. It's always tough on Scott's list because it's really hard to find songs that I don't like and don't resonate with. I think I'm going to do it by artist, my favorite song of the artist. So uh, Daughter by Loud and Wayne Rise, the only one on here. That's going to get an honorable mention for me. And then Pierce Pettis has three songs, Little Man, Great Big World, and Grandmother Song. It's gonna come down to Little Man or Great Big World. I'll go with uh, I'll go with just both of those. I'll cheat. So those two are faves. 
Bob Bennett, Angels Around Your Bed and No Such Thing as Divorce. I'm going to go with No Such Thing as Divorce. I think it's just a fantastically written song. It's so theologically correct. And then the Terry Scott Taylor offerings. I'm Setting You Free. Definitely resonating with that. White Princess is such a difficult song to write. I mean, it's so good. Then I'll go with the Lord Protect My Child. So go with the Lord Protect My Child. I'm Setting You Free. No Such Thing as Divorce. Great Big World. Little Man with an honorable mention for Daughter. So I didn't really pick one by each artist, but hey, that was the plan going in. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your favorite tracks below. What else you think I should check out? Thanks again, Scott, for curating such a fantastic list. And until next time, guys, I will see you.